Hello and welcome to the Thursday process. I'm uh, Ian Richardson and we'll be joined shortly by Bob Coppage, CEO of Simplex IT. We're going to just take a couple of minutes to let people cycle in. So if you need to grab a cup of coffee, a glass of water, or something like that, go ahead and do it. We'll get started right at two minutes past the half hour. So looking forward to diving into this topic and we'll get started soon. For those of you cycling in, hello and welcome to the Thursday process. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm your host, Ian Richardson, and I should be joined by Bob here shortly. Um, looking forward to diving into this topic. We're going to get started in just a minute, so if you need to refill that coffee, now's the time. All right, well, we're going to dive in and get started with a bit of housekeeping. Hopefully, Bob is uh, trying to log in right now. Hello, and uh, welcome to the Thursday process. Quick disclaimer before we get started, the presentations on Thursday process are intended for educational purposes only. They should never replace independent professional advice or your own personal judgment. Statements of facts and opinions expressed are those of the participants individually. They do not represent the opinion or position of employers or certifying bodies. Nothing on the Thursday process should ever be presented. Nothing presented here should ever be considered legal or financial advice. A quick note, you may be watching this on demand. If so, consider that we do not update or change the information after the original broadcast. Today is the 9th of March, 2023 at 11.32 Eastern Time. So if you're watching this on demand, just take note that this hasn't been updated uh, since the original broadcast. Quick bits of housekeeping here. Uh, there are polls that happen on Thursday process. If you've been here before, you'll recognize the questions. Uh, they're pretty quick, multiple choice. Those polls help Carrie and I get guests onto Thursday process and helps us steer the content. So appreciate your participation in them. Go ahead and, uh, and answer them as they pop up. It does help us make it better. Also, after the webinar, you'll get an email from me inviting you to uh, participate in a quick three-question survey. That should take no more than two minutes. It's essentially, what'd you like? What didn't you like? And uh, give us a numerical rating. Really appreciate it if you, uh, if you participate in that survey to help us make the webinar better because this is for the, uh, for the IT channel. That's the reason we do it. Some introductions, and then I may have to pause and call our, uh, our missing presenter. Uh, I'm Ian Richardson. I owned and operated an MSP for 16 years before selling it and co-founding Richardson & Richardson with my wife, Carrie. Our goal is to help out the IT channel through uh, consultation and, and guidance to help you all achieve whatever your version of success is. And I should be joined by Bob. Uh, Bob Coppage is the CEO of Simplex IT, a managed IT solutions provider or MSP out of the Cleveland, Ohio metro area. He and his team established a base of clients who were co-managed uh it and that's essentially a, a quick definition it's just a shared it responsibility for their customers and they didn't really realize when they were uh, pursuing this as a strategy that that was a strategy 
Kevin, who's Bob's service manager, and Bob were at an IT conference, IT Nation, uh, and Arnie was up on the stage and said, hey, co-management's a big opportunity. Bob and Kevin looked at each other and said, hey, we're already doing this. Let's, let's create a bit of an intentional focus and strategy. And that's what was essentially the, uh, the generation of the process we're going to be diving into. Um, I'm going to go on mute really quick and call Bob Sell just to see if he's going to make it. If he doesn't, we will run through this process. It'll just be uh, me talking versus Bob in here. Um, so any questions and answers that I can't answer from my conversations with Bob, I will collect and connect you and him uh, to get those answered if he doesn't show up. So this is the first. I will be right back and you'll see me on this. Good news, I got Bob, just an issue with the link. So you might have seen me on the on the other screen here, just sending it over. So he'll be in. So um, a quick couple of things up at the up at the top. There's the handout section. If you want to download this process and follow along, I will try to call out the uh, the stage or the step as we run through it. So I'll, I'll for example say, hey, we're on stage two if you want to hop up and down on this process document. Also, if you want to be connected with Bob, um, just go ahead and throw in a, a question there saying, hey, hey, could you connect us, etc. But there's going to be a link later on that'll take you right to Bob's calendar if you want to coordinate some time with him. And I do know that he is uh, more than happy to dive into this process with anyone who's interested. So... Let's go ahead and, uh, and, and start a little bit of a review. And oh, there he is. Here comes Bob. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So we'll just wait for him to pop in. Bob, how are you doing? Oh, I'm embarrassed, but other than that, fine. <laughs> No worries, my friend. No worries. We're that is a skill, though, to embarrass me. You know, I I, uh, I like to uh, I like to push the boundaries of what you expect. So, and, and well done. <laughs> so we were uh, we were just getting started. I just went through some of the background, um, but when you, when you and I had, had spoke, you had mentioned that. Uh, you and Kevin were down at IT Nation, and Arnie was up on stage saying, "Hey, co-managed is uh, is an opportunity." Can you can you give a little bit of background into how you guy, how you and Kevin and the rest of the Simplex team realized, "Hey, we're we're doing this right now." So this this is where it, it, it exactly is that simple. Arnie was up doing his standard keynote, and he really didn't even focus it on it that much. He basically talked about three or four opportunities. Uh, in the managed service world. And he mentioned, oh, and of course, co-managed IT, uh, partnering with existing IT is a great opportunity. Now let's look over here at the next squirrel and, and change topics. So it literally was that much out of his 45 minute. 
And Kevin and I were in the on. We looked at each other and it was like, oh, so that's what we've been doing. And it, it actually predates that. The first client I had with Simplex IT, I was uh, doing uh, SQL consulting for a uh, healthcare insurance group here in, in Cleveland. And uh, I decided to start this silly ass uh, managed service company. And I told them that I was going to have to leave, but don't worry, I'll take a few months and we'll find somebody to replace me. And they go, no, you can stay. And, no, you don't understand. I'm doing this managed service thing and it's going to be managed services. And so I, I can't work with you. That's okay. We'll do that. So just tell us what that has to be like. So literally my first client was a co-managed uh, client and they're still with us to this day. I don't do the work. Somebody else does. But essentially, uh, essentially just from the, from the start, co-managed was kind of the strategy, the, the unintentional strategy. Yeah. It sounds like. Absolutely. But we found patterns and this was the key thing because in a lot of cases, and especially when we talk with managed service providers who stumbled into, as I did, uh, their first co-managed, it, it's unique for those requirements. And that thing you feel, well, uniqueness is not what we make our money on. We make our money on by doing the same thing, you know, over and over by scaling it, by sizing it, by repeating it, you know, economies of scale and the like. And so as we move forward and we did more of these things, we were like, okay, can we package this without knowing what the heck it was uh, from the co-managed standpoint? And that's, and, and we really were just waiting for something to bring it all together. And that's where Arnie's speech came in. And so you you just mentioned requirements. That's a that's a great uh, transition point. And so for those of you following along, I'm looking at uh, at point number two in the in the process document, which is around classifying people into maturity buckets. So when when you when you get an opportunity, Bob, you have four different types of co managed opportunities or or these buckets that you kind of classify someone into. And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind. Just walk us through what are those four buckets and how do you define them so that so that people can uh, can be on the same page? Okay. So there's there's two things that we try to do it is one, we try to talk about it from our perspective mm -hmm. in terms of how do we encapsulate what our offering is. And that's trying to identify so that we can we can fill the needs and all that. And then on the other side, it, it's on the uh, consumer side, is mm -hmm. from the standpoint of the maturity or the like. So you want to hit on, on on the client side. Well, yeah. Th so this was the uh, the senior junior thin right. hollow cool. stuff. Yep. So it's one of those where you take a look. If we take a look at your traditional IT department, and and, and here's one of the things: a lot of people. When they talk about co-managed, they talk about co-managed in the in the medium size of the SMB marketplace. So they're talking about the they got the CIO, they got the senior techs, they got the, and that's great and that's a wonderful opportunity. But there's more opportunity there, and and one of the things we take a look at is so we basically take a look at an organization at an IT organization. What do they have? They basically have those four pieces, uh, and they have first of all they have management. And by all of this, we're talking about the IT side of things. So whether we call it CIO, CTO, IT director, data processing manager, electronic data processing manager, which was my first IT management title because I'm old, but they still had electronics. So, so anyway, that's someone who is responsible for the overall operations. And you can basically say the strategic IT aspect of it. All right, cool. Usually you got one of those. All right. Then you've got your level three, level two, and level one. And those are essentially, and, and, and again, you're going to find a million different uh, uh, definitions of them out there. But the bottom line is the level threes are the experienced people. Those are the ones who make the most money. The level ones are the entry level. And the level twos are the wayward boys and girls who don't necessarily know what that means. So the level three are the ones who are going to be, who are going to be responsible for uh, uh, the big ticket items. They're going to be, yeah. and a very simplistic way of saying that is they're going to be your systems analysts. They're going to be your network administrators. They're going to be able to handle the infrastructure, some of the security aspects and all that. And we're not talking about specialization here. 
Mm -hmm. So when you talk about an IT organization, you can kind of look at those four structures. And I honestly do get rid of level two because it level two can, is a little bit of one and a little bit of three. Mm -hmm. So you're really talking about the, the CIO, IT director, strategic virtual CIO in our parlance in a lot of cases, and then the senior and then the junior. And really what ends up happening is you can kind of look and how well staffed are they in those layers? And you can almost think of it as, okay, they're top heavy. Okay, top heavy basically means they don't have enough entry level people. That would be an organization that has, they, they can't keep up with their end user help desk support. They can't use keep up with the tickets, deploying new users, anything along those lines. So they're they're thin down, down or, or they're, they're, they're lean down on that part. Bottom heavy is the opposite. That's where they, they may have the entry level people, they may have the, the level one technicians, but they don't have the senior and or the virtual C or the CIO type of position. Mm -hmm. So that would be the bottom heavy. Then the thin, um, the thin is where they've got the right people, just not enough of them. Mm -hmm. And that can manifest itself in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is they truly don't have enough people and they can't get around it. But the second one is they've got enough people, but they don't have the tools. So those people can't be as productive because they don't have what MSPs should take for granted. All of the automation, all of the scripting, all of the best practices, all of the documentation, all of the standards, all of the automated pieces, parts that we're all, they're all supposed to be busy doing. Um, and then the, the final one is, what because you and I actually came up with that term. What was the last one? Hollow. The hollow. Yeah. And that's something where they're missing a particular piece. They're yeah. really good, but this company really needs database analysis. This company really needs a particular skill, and it's that skill that's missing. And you can fill that hollow piece there. Okay? And this is something that you'll notice I'm not bringing up any technical specifics. I'm yep. strictly talking about how well adapted that IT group is to meet the needs of that organization from a staffing and skills perspective. And we should be able to, having a non-threatening, useful conversation with whoever is the most responsible person for IT over there, we should be able to determine which of those four models they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're not threatening anybody's job. We're not saying that they're not up to the task. We're not saying we want any, we're not doing any of that. We're strictly saying, hey, tell us about yourself. Yep. Yeah. And, and really, and this kind of leads right into point three, which is which is creating that messaging for each experience. So as you you mentioned that as you go through a discovery and you start to identify, hey, this is a top heavy organization, or this is a thin organization, or what have you, the message will start to present back where, for example, in that senior heavy, that top heavy organization, right. hey, like, user issues are killing me. I'm, I'm fixing printers all day, and I can't get the important work done. Well, and not only that, but the person who I'm paying to fix those printers could be so better used. Mm -hmm. by making sure this other project that is making us a ton of money gets done. So I have this person who is making 80,000 bucks an hour doing whatever, who is resetting someone's password for the seventh time. Yep. And it's also mind numbing because this person wants to be doing what they're paid to do, which is to go work on the servers, make sure that the VoIP system is configured properly so that the voice traffic isn't falling off. We want to be able to do that so everybody can have phone conversations. But no, that person instead has to talk someone through how to do a mail merge in Word. Yep. Yep. You know, and, and it's one of those where you can have that conversation with the, the CIO or the IT director or the CEO or whatever and commiserate about how you can't do that. That's got to be frustrating. And I'll bet your team just loves getting calls from all the end users. Mm -hmm. You know, this is great. And, and you're not saying, I want to take that person's job. I could do it better than them. Because then it's adversarial. No, instead you're basically saying, let's, boy, wouldn't it be great 
if, if we could work together and find some way so that we wouldn't have all those issues, uh, well, let's see, the end user would be happy. Uh, your level three tech who's getting these end user calls would be happy. Uh, you guys would have the productivity, your weight and your, your VoIP issue would be fixed. And, and we make some money. Yay. Yep. And, and using that, uh, using that conversation that talk to us about how that conversation shifts from, Hey, we're talking with the CEO, the entrepreneurial leader, the CIO, the CTO, someone in executive management who is not threatened by a managed services relationship at all to when it shifts and you start having that conversation with the IT workers themselves and how you can get on that same page with either a top heavy or a bottom heavy organization. Sure. Or a thin organization is the yep. same thing's true. Yep. You know, I mean, essentially, first of all, when you're talking to CIOs, especially on the smaller side, they can be threatened too. Mm -hmm. So always, 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 always be aware of that. Okay. The, the, the threat is real because that's what our industry and most of our marketing messaging is based on. So we've always got to be that. So it ain't about us. It's the conversation is not about the managed service provider is not about how we're going to swoop in and save the day. We are not the cavalry. Mm -hmm. We are the ones providing the horses to the cavalry. We are the ones who are pointing out how the, where the cavalry needs to go. We are the ones riding with the cavalry. We never lose sight. There's, there's a marketing concept uh, uh, called story tag or, or Story, story brand. brand. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. The guy, basically his point is, you know, nobody wants to be rescued by the hero. They want to be the hero. There is nothing as close to that truth as this conversation that you're going to have with the IT people. You want them to thrive. You want them to succeed and, and essentially turn that into that's your, that's how your success is going to be measured. So I got to tell you, dude, you know, I, I hear you. You're going through all these issues. I want to be some. I want to make be blunt, clear here. You succeed, we succeed. You fail, we fail. This is not an either or type of situation. It's kind of weird. This whole co-manage thing. It really is a cooperative management. And so, one of the things I've got your back. I am going to be there to help you. I'm going to help help you be successful. I'm going to help you be great. Now, you got to do your part too. You can't just you know phone it in. But it's together, man, because you know this business better than we ever will. Because you're here, you know, five days a week. So you know the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. My team knows a lot of stuff that's just out from the, because we got the time to look at all these industry tools. We've put together all these things that help us be a lot more productive. And, and man, we want you to use them. And we want you to give us feedback. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, so it is all about us. It is all about peer to peer. It is all about equals. If you've got, especially if, if whoever is engaged in the conversation, if you've got a history in those shoes, bring a couple of stories, not, but bring the stories, not because you're so cool when you did that, mm -hmm. but because you remember the pain, you remember the angst. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I used to be IT director of this company. And it would be like, I would go to the to the management all the time. You know, we got to have backups. We got to have backups. We got to have backups. He'd be, yeah, whatever. It's too expensive. You can't afford it. Can't afford it. Then this consultant came out of nowhere and said once, you got to have backups. And the guy looks at me like I've never known that in my life. Mm -hmm. I know what that's like. That's, you know, you, know, you, you, you the guy treats you like an idiot because you've only been saying it for six months. But the consultant comes in. We will never do that to you. If we're ever going to come in with an idea, we're going to bring it through you. And we're going to make sure you get part of the credit. You work with us. It's a team. And yeah. especially in some cases, and this is especially true on the smaller organizations, and especially with the one-man, one-woman IT shops, mm -hmm. they love the lifeline. They've been oh, yeah. looking for someone to rescue them. Yeah, we and we... Uh... That resonates so 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 firmly with me that back at back at my old MSP, we had a, quite a few co-managed opportunities, and 
that collaborative approach just made everything flow through better where really it was a, Hey, what are you, what are you seeing? Here's what we see. How does that resonate with what you see? All right. Which one do you want to tackle first? Yep. How can we help you want us there? And then you, you essentially pay, you, you play uh, the harmony and you let them lead the melody and you say, yeah, no, like Bob's right. This is he's exactly right. That's what we've been seeing too. We've been, yeah. we've been discussing on the back end and he's got this plan that he's uh, like, he's got the plan to solve it. And here's the, here's the outlines of that plan and take it away, Bob. And you let them kind of shine through and step in to help support when needed. A lot of the times, especially if, it, if it's a more junior one man band, they, they might not have that business knowledge about, yeah. Hey, here's the business outcomes, but they can definitely say, Oh yeah, well, we need to, we need, put in a new backup system and well, okay. And here's the business outcomes of that, Mr. CEO, here's why you care. So let's, let's, let's dig in on that for, for a little bit, because there's two scenarios in that scenario. Number one is the, what does that person want to be when they grow up? Okay. Mm -hmm. And to give them the opportunity to look over your shoulder and to learn. So one of the things that we always have, we always have a process and we've got a couple of different programs. Uh, but on, on, on most of them, there's a they have the ability to escalate if, if they're responsible for a certain area and they can't handle it. They don't know how they can always come to us for additional advice or thoughts or whatever. That's included. There's no additional charge. We'll always, you know, give them this is why you should. This is why you shouldn't. Uh, they won't let me handle those calls. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but they can also escalate. And escalate essentially means we want you guys to handle it and it will be time and material charge for it. Great, groovy. But one of the things we also go back to, do you want to watch? Do you want to be involved in that so that you don't have to escalate that the next time? Mm -hmm. And for us to basically say, because it's one thing for them to go, I don't want to do that. I don't have time, whatever. And there's another, boy, I don't know how to do that. Maybe my job is in danger. They are going to replace me. These guys are, they're just going to shine. That kind of alleviates that. Similarly, and this is a huge one, if it's taken advantage of, they don't know how business works. Mm -hmm. And so they don't know those kind of conversations. And especially in some organizations where IT is held at, at arm's length uh, from the rest of the business process, we can basically, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want, I'm a level one. I want to be a level two. I'm a level two. I want to be a level three. I'm a level three. I want to be a CIO, whatever, you know, that traditional. And there's always that, that moment in someone's career when you have to choose, are you going to go management or are you going to go tech mm -hmm. you know, as far as your development? And I've had situations where I've, I've basically said, look, you want to be a CIO then let's you and I get together for a conversation every month or a couple of months or whatever. And let's just talk about it, but you've got to start working on developing those skills and I'll help you. So you've got those opportunities to work. And again, that increases the glue that's going to keep those clients in. And again, especially with the smaller organizations. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and that that person, if, it, you know, the all things, all things being equal, when you're an IT guy at a 40-person company, a 50-person company, and after you've stayed there however long, maybe three, maybe five, maybe seven years, your skill set will outgrow that. And I'm imagining that by investing into them and helping them develop up, hey, here's how you can have these business conversations. Here's how you can do that. When they jump organizations, not only do you have the current client, but that person who maybe gets hired as an IT director at 150 user site says, oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna bring Bob and Simplex along. I'm not even gonna staff a department. Yep, we, we just got an email from that exact situation earlier this week from a guy who was in a manufacturing company uh, who went to another one and just, and just reached out to us for this, for that exact situation. Well, we're so absolutely, there. absolutely. That sort of stuff can happen. And, and on the, on the larger organizations who you could basically sit back and say, it is a CIO level person. They do have those skills. They still want peers. They still yep. want someone, and, and the comment that I always use to them is, you've already bought my stuff. I don't have to sell you anything. So I can have these conversations. You can run ideas that you want to talk to management about. You know, I, 
I wear the CEO hat here, so I know the CEO game. I've worn the CIO hat. I've played that game for over a dozen years. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, you don't, I'm not selling you anything. You're not buying anything else from me. Let's talk. And one of the nuances I also use is we have multiple models of our co-manager, our co mets and our pure MSP. So if we need to change the plan, whether it's additional resources or fewer resources, I really don't care. You know, it, my view has always been, you know, if we do the work, I want to get paid. Beyond that, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And so if an organization sits back and says, you know, we're using your full MSP services, we might want to bring in somebody on site. We might want to hire somebody. It's like, fine, that's great. We'll switch over to a co-manage, you know, whether we go commits or silo or whatever, let's do this. We'll help make sure it's the right fit and the right process. Similarly, if somebody was sitting back going, uh, we want, we're doing commits, we want to do a different model of commits, we want to go pure, whatever, we're there. We will help. Because it, at the end of the day, and this was one of the things from a managed service perspective or internal IT or whatever, at the end of the day, the goal of our services is meaningless, except in how it helps the productivity of the client. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is the client does, we, our goal, internal IT, our services, whatever, is to make them more effective at that. Mm -hmm. and, and you could talk about how infrastructure directly or indirectly relates. You could talk about security directly or indirectly relates. You could talk about anything, man in the moon, whatever. But by and large, we don't matter diddly. It's about what their results are. And I think that managed service providers really don't spend anywhere near enough time on that conversation in that aspect. Yeah, circling around and visiting that, that impact that, hey, how did we help your business? Not how, like, hey, how many tickets did we sell? That's fine. That's, that's something that broke. But right. like, what was, what was the business impact of the relationship? How have we helped you? further progress towards business goals instead of, oh, well, you're more secure. Well, no business has a business goal of being more secure. They just need to be secure. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it gets back to the everything, the tide is rising. Mm -hmm. You know, the blinking lights, the closed tickets, those are commodities. And so, yeah. yes, we need to do those. Yes, we have to do, but, but if we focus on that, then we're focusing on essentially you know, a, a strong editorial in favor of spring. <laughs> I like that. I, I really, really, really like that. And so thinking about, um, thinking about this conversation and, and leaning in, once you've classified where an organization sits, who the players are and selected that, that messaging strategy, if you're talking to the, like, there's probably really two conversations that happen with one of these opportunities. One is you've got an organization, they have an IT team, but you happen to be talking to the CEO, COO, CFO, someone who's not holding the IT bucket. Mm -hmm. And then the other is you're talking to an IT, an organization with an IT, and you're talking to the IT organization. And there's a little bit of a divergence there. And so right. could you talk through both situations? Hey, the CEO reached out to me about IT. Maybe maybe they're having doubts. Maybe they're having second thoughts. Maybe they just recognize, hey, we, we need to augment, you know, John over here in the IT desk. And then what sure. about if John, the IT director, or John, the L3 is calling and they call Simplex and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a new MSP. So... Let's back up a second, because I honestly think there is way too much attention spent on this conversation, on this particular topic, to a certain degree. In a traditional MSP environment, we've reached, we fall under the exact same situations constantly. It's the finance guy. The finance guy is the one who arranged the IT arrangement. But sometimes it's the CEO who calls us. And the CEO says, yeah, our IT sucks. Can you talk to our, our CFO? Give, you know, give Larry, our CFO, a call. Because it just sucks. We need to do something about it. Well, so we're not really talking to the person who's going to be uh, vet, vetting the, 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 the vendors. Similarly, we talked to the CFO and he goes, yeah, we're having a real problem with our, with our IT, but I don't make the decisions. The CEO does. Mm -hmm. 
So we have to figure out who the players are in the game. We just added another person, another potential role. Yep. So now instead of instead of having one person who is mildly involved with IT and the CEO, we have someone who is very involved with IT and possibly a CFO and a CEO or a COO and a CEO. Mm -hmm. But it, it gets down to with them, what's in it for me? Yep. What is driving the person in this conversation? The one thing, the only thing that really has to be nuanced is if IT, if the internal IT really sucks. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it from the standpoint of who do you have the first conversation with? Do you have the first conversation because it was inbound or outbound? Meaning, in, in other words, if someone calls you because yep. they see your site and they see co-managed and all that kind of fun stuff, that's your first point of contact. If that's the CEO and they basically say, my IT sucks, well, now you've got a decision to make, but it's an easy one, and it's their decision, really. Yep. You can basically say, well, we really uh, excel in bringing the most functionality and productivity uh, improvements we can to your organization through the proper use of IT. And we can do this either being your entire IT resource or we can partner with your existing internal IT. And essentially, and it's obviously more complicated than this, listen to them come back and say, no, I want to can all those jerks. I uh -huh. hate them. Okay, traditional MSP. Well, I think they're really trying, but I just don't think they have enough support or they need some additional help. Okay, go manage. I don't care. Either way, we're still going to talk about that improved productivity. Okay, now let's switch this around. Let's do the exact same thing, but it's the IT person reaching out to us. The IT person reaching out to us and goes, yeah, oh, man, uh, boss really hates us. Uh, we're having some problems. I saw your thing about uh, co-managed. Uh, uh, yeah, tell me about it. What, what does that mean? Well, mm -hmm. in this particular case, you're, in my opinion, you're stuck on co-managed. Because yeah. for you to enter into a conversation with your with the internal IT people, blah, 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 and then go to the CEO and say, by the way, those guys are idiots. Let me replace them. Yeah, you no. may actually win that job. But I'll tell you, the odds of you, from a reputational standpoint, from a trust standpoint, all it takes is one person going, yeah, I, re I answered out to this guy's ad and I lost my job. Mm -hmm. Even if he's the worst person in the world from an IT perspective, it doesn't matter. You don't get to control that narrative. So from that standpoint, it really, to me, the big question is, where did that conversation begin? And yep. if it began with IT, you really are stuck with co-managed. If it begins with CEO, it can go either way, and, and, and you don't care. Well, and I, I want to revisit a, a previous point, which is having that flexibility to shift the plan. And so you, you, there's a lot of different schools of thought out there. You know, you, you've got the, um, hey, sell one plan and just sell one plan, a la carte, and then everything in between. And we're not necessarily talking about a la carte. You can have a defined standard and say, hey, if we're going to work with you, we have to have this floor. We have to have this. Right. For us to do our job if we're going to accept responsibility. That's not what we're talking about here. You're just talking about being able to be flexible with regards to that relationship to where if someone's, for example, is using you for primary help desk and then they bring in someone and they say, hey, you know, like we don't need the help desk anymore. You can say, hey, no problem. We'll remove that because you can still keep that account. You can still make good revenue off of there. And you just aren't doing that particular subset of service and, and replace help desk with whatever. Maybe they're not going to use you for asset management or maybe they're going to manage backups in-house now. Whatever that might be, you're talking about flexibility for the components of the service agreement. Because just because they say, hey, we don't want you to run backups now doesn't mean nine months down the road, they might not come back and say, hey, you know what? We'd, we'd rather put backups back in. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's one of those where again I get back to that the statement I made earlier. As long as I'm getting paid for my work, mm -hmm. I'm okay. You know, and and that pretty much is it. And I don't want, uh, you know, I don't want to be where I'm not wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is one of those where 
and you need to, as an MSP, you have to make this match your MSP offering. You cannot have a, and I've talked to people who have this, this weird thought of, of they have to have something that is going to match every uh, individual uh, 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 co-managed need that comes in. You don't have to be that specialized. If you want to, great, but good luck on the profit margins. And good luck in ter- terms of uh, your, your tech team controlling who they talk to and on what and on all that kind of fun stuff. So what we do is we do it fairly straightforward. We have more or less uh, five models, for lack of a better. Uh, first is uh, full MSP. That's your traditional MSP. There is no internal IT, nothing. That's on the top level. The yep. bottom level is subscription. Subscription is you're buying your 365 licensing from us. You're buying your Azure from us, whatever. There's a markup on our part, but that's it. We're not supporting it. We're not. We're just reselling stuff. That's commodity. We do no marketing for subscription stuff whatsoever. We do no pushing for it. If it lands on our lap, we'll do it. That's about it. Between those, we have three levels of comments. We have what we call full comments, which is using all of our stamps, all of the software tools, methodologies, portals, all the stuff that we use for a pure MSP, but we turn them over to the internal IT person or -hmm. people. That's for your thin, what we were talking about earlier. So that way they've got all our superpowers, our Iron Man suit, whatever metaphor you want to use. They've got all that. Terrific. Then we've got what we call desktop comments. Desktop comments is where they handle the desktops and the end users and all that. We handle the servers and infrastructures. That's basically for your bottom heavy where they've got level one people, but they don't have the level three people in the virtual CIO. Okay. Still exact same distribution of stamps and all that as full comments as in the pure MSP. It's just who's responsible for it. And then finally, we have the server comments. That's where they've, they're top heavy. They've got the level three, blah, blah, blah. And we handle the desktops and the end users. So throughout all that, we're still just delivering the exact same software tools, methodologies, portals. We're doing the same thing. It's just a question of who's responsible, okay? And yep. so we'll we'll flip between any one of those if they want to do so. But we're not going to get into a line item where we'll take out this line item, we'll take out this line item. That's not me saying you shouldn't. It's up to you, but you've got to be able to make that work. Yep. Then the other thing that we've got for the hollow points uh, is what we call silo IT. And silo IT is where we take a specific subset and only that subset where we just do silo backups, silo Azure, silo cloud, silo uh, BI, silo SQL, where we just do those things and those things only. I'm actually working on a proposal now for a somewhat large organization where it's a combination of silo infrastructure, uh, silo Azure, and full comets. Mm-hmm which is going to be weird. So we've got the flexibility, but the flexibility is built within our model structure. So our service desk team doesn't have to go, I, wait, what? We do this for these guys, but not for the, we, we include it for these guys and not for the, why, what, huh? Nope. You, you see what I'm saying? Yep. So you want the structure in place. Yeah, you got to you got to make it easy for your team to be able to diversify. And so, talking about management of this process, you, you and you just really meant meant uh, went through this that defining those offerings and this is what it is, so that someone can say, "Oh, hey, it's full comets. I understand what that is because if it's full comets here at client A, it's the same for B, it's the same for C, because exceptions don't scale." Uh, but one of the one of the key areas is that thinking about infrastructure, you need to have a non-public facing assessment for those internal IT people. So a way through your conversations that you can say, all right, they th- this is sounding like a thin organization or a top heavy organization, et cetera. Um, but, the, but the key deal is really like for tracking efficacy in COMET is net new deals. Is that accurate? Like, hey, how many, how many opportunities are you landing? It's the same thing for any for any of these agreements. Yeah. For pure for pure MSP, for co-managed, for comets, for silo, for anything. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanna I wanna spend a little bit of time. And for those of you following along, this is uh, the lessons learned from mistakes section. This is a this is a pretty 
valuable area. So you had mentioned um, a, a couple of scenarios, and I'll, I'll tee up the scenario and let you do a little bit. First off, there was a uh, there was an IT guy who thought Linux was the way, and yep. all servers should be Linux, everything should be Linux, and they were essentially changing the infrastructure over to that. Talk, talk through a little bit about that scenario and, and, and what the results were, were from that experience. Well, let's talk about how wonderful it was first. <laughs> this was a guy, and, there, and by the way, there's no villains in this story. Mm -hmm. okay? This was a guy who attended several of our lunch and learns back when we used to do them years ago, was our biggest fan, loved what we did, wanted to have a job, a, a situation where we could work together. But he thought all things should run Linux especially Windows servers. <laughs> and so he would basically, and, and we came up with this agreement because he, it, he didn't like, uh, uh, he didn't like end users. Mm -hmm. Who does? Not me. Anyway. Um, and so we were coming up with a, a solution where he would be, it would be a server commits. He would handle the servers and the infrastructure. We would handle the desktops and the end users. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. So two problems. We basically say that, you know, any advice you need, call us. We'll walk you through it or whatever. And every call we got, and we got a lot of them, was how to de-Windows Windows servers so that they would act more like Linux boxes. Mm -hmm. So not to use the integrated DNS, not to use the integrated DHCP, but instead to run these cockamamie, that's a technical term, uh, the, these two, and, and we're like, don't you don't. And this was not a large organization. There were no technical requirements needing it or the like. So we couldn't give him advice except for don't do that. Yeah. That's the only advice we could give him throughout this whole process. At the same time, he would not let help desk tickets get forwarded over to us from the end users because he could get to it faster because he was there. Mm. So he ended up sabotaging and and i use that word cautiously because he didn't mean it uh not letting us do the job that we wanted to do for the end users and to to manage them and he also would ask us for advice on how to do things that we really should not have been doing in terms of adding value to the organization and we we went through this for about two years uh and we got paid good money to do it Mm -hmm. And it ended up, we, we couldn't do what we wanted to do. And everybody got more and more frustrated because of it. Yeah, that, that essentially creates the area where, where nobody's winning. Yeah. And so um, this, this really takes us down to that point four, which is like being willing to walk away. Hey, this environment is becoming bad, and not because of a person. Like you mentioned, there's no villain right. there. It's just we're misaligned. This isn't working anymore. It, and again, a, man, a traditional managed service provider, we've probably all been there. Mm -hmm. When a client, and I get back to the, you know, someone says, "What's a good client for you?" And I, you gotta understand and appreciate the value of IT being productive. If yep. you do not get that value, this is going to be a bad fit because we're going to charge you a lot more money than you think you should pay. Uh, and we're going to offer you a lot of resources that you're not going to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So let's just get that one right out in the open. Similarly, you know, and I, and and the way I've said it is is the only thing worse than a than a a good co-managed client signing is a bad co-managed or the only thing worse than a uh, good co-managed opportunity getting away is a bad one signing. Oh yeah, you know, and this was it. It was you know absolutely square peg in a round hole. And during those initial conversations you can get a feel. Mm -hmm. What do you think about best practices? When you install stuff, are you using, you know, standards? Are you coming up with crazy ways to do it? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you choose kinder, gentler ways of, of phrasing it, but you can kind of get a feel. And you can throw out some, well, you know, we've done it this way and, and have had luck with this process or whatever, and just gauge their responses. And you can even basically say, and look, when we give advice, it's about best practice. It's about doing the, the things because 99% of, of Microsoft Windows stuff actually works pretty well if you configure it properly. It's when you start getting fancy. Yep. And so drive towards that simplicity in all, in all recommendations. And so another, uh, another area is, is like 
you had mentioned around that internal IT resource being a, a son of an owner type <laughs> situation where there there is some resistance to those best practices and making sure that that if you're going to keep that on for whatever reason probably cash flow recognize that that won't scale you can't scale right those exceptions or worse you can but the the expenses will scale just as fast if not faster than the revenue mm -hmm. that's the worst part hey we just signed on three new clients hey they're all dysfunctional you know um, yeah, this was a case where, uh, again, nice, nice guys, nice folks, all that. Um, the sun sort of had a, everything was shiny, mm -hmm. you know, oh, this latest thing, this coolest thing. And he would decide what he wanted to work on and what he didn't want to work on. Mm -hmm. And just and, and it was one of the he also had a bit of a temper, which I don't do well with as far as tolerating. And I have, you know, standard rule. Anybody yells at you. It's okay to hang up. So it's okay to tell, give them my number, tell them to call me, yep. uh, you know? And, and so it was one of those where we had much more time doing uh, nursemaid uh, mm -hmm. than actually doing it work. And they find actually, they left us uh, late last year. Finally, we finally basically just said, look, we got to go. Mm -hmm. Making sure, uh, like the the one last thing that I just want to highlight out of this is that whenever leaving, and and I think this probably it goes without saying, but those are usually the things that should be said the most is when you when you part as friends, taking that high road, making sure to to part with with the internal IT resources as friends, as the CEO as friends, that always delivers opportunities because. Just the same as with a MSP help desk or an MSP IT resource, you will have people turn, people leave, people pursue, they move, they pursue different opportunities. Yeah. Same can happen at that client. And even though you opted out, if that single resource IT person leaves and migrates away, that CEO might call you and say, hey, you know what, instead of us hiring one, we just bring you back. And I can tell you an exact that exact thing happened uh, last year. So we had a company that we spoke to about two or three years ago, and this was after we learned some of the lessons where this guy had a weird as a publishing company and they had a weird setup uh, and it wasn't going to get any better. And we talked to the guy and he was looking for someone to support him on the co-managed side of things, uh, a Unix based ERP system that hadn't been updated in like four years. Uh, it was uh, 50 computers in a work group. They had home, they had pro, they were sort of using Google for G suite and all that, but not really. It was just all over the bloody place. And we were like, okay, we can help you, but we got to put some standards together. We got to put some money in blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to do that, but I do need somebody to back me up when I go on vacation. That's not us. Cool. Sorry to hear that. Best of luck. We get a call from the same company, but from the CFO. Turns out completely new management team. This guy had left, the IT guy had left about six, nine months earlier. So around Q2 of last year, uh, they hired somebody else. And the person who came in was like, I have no idea what any of this stuff is at all. So they gave up, basically dug up my card, contacted us again, and they're with us. And as a full, as, in this case, as a pure MSP, and we are in the process. We've moved them over to 365. Uh, we've moved them into a, a much better, you know, using Intune and other pieces, parts still a work in progress. Uh, and we were very, very blunt with them up front. Say, look, you know, there are a lot of changes. There's a lot of investments mm -hmm. uh, you got to do because you've got a lot of tech debt. And they, they knew the pain of nobody being able to support them. And so it, it absolutely, bur burning bridges is, is, is a dumb thing to do. 100% agree. And so I've got a I've got a link over to the Simplex website that goes uh, to an embedded version of your calendar here on the on the screen, Bob. But you you've um one of the things we had talked about beforehand. You've got a new podcast that you've launched off. Well, why don't you take a, a couple of minutes and talk about that, and then talk about uh um for for the for the other MSPs on the call how. Simplex might be able to help them out if if they're if they're if they're thinking about going after Comit, et cetera. 
So, sure. Uh, so unlike anyone else on this planet, I've decided to start a podcast, you know, because that's, I wanted something that was unique. Oh, yeah. That nobody else is. Doing. But, that's right. <laughs> uh, no, I, it, and it was, it actually was born out of the fact that we were doing monthly webcasts last year. We just decided we didn't want to do the webcast. So we figured we'd do the podcast. Uh, the podcast is called Biz Tech Twists. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually just launched about a week ago. And honestly, it is an unscripted. I, I bring a guest on. I know you're going to be on it sooner or later because you lost a bet, I think. Or something. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and literally, we just start with a couple of, um, of, of thoughts and then goes wherever. I just want to find different perspectives on looking at things. So uh, there's that. Um, as far as getting started, I actually started and put on hold for right now anyway a uh, commits for MSPs. So it's commits, C-O-M-I-T-S, number four, MSPs.com. It does have some resources for co-managed IT services. Go ahead and freely take a look at it. The other thing that I would look is look at our website, simplex-it.com. And look not only, if you look at our services, you'll see managed and co-managed, but also look at our learning center. We are big believers in creating video content and educational content. We have videos that answer questions. So we've got ones that say, what is co-managed IT services? What, what's uh, managed services? What is silo IT? What is commits? All those kind of fun stuff. Feel absolutely free to link to any of those things. And honestly, feel free to steal them because what? I'm going to come after you. <laughs> so there, there you have it. For those of you watching this, Bob has given you explicit consent to swipe away, which uh, that's an Israel Lang uh, acronym, steal with intentionality and pride every day. So <laughs> swipe, swipe those resources and, uh, and, and recreate them and, and use them as your own or, or go ahead and feel free to link out to, to Bob's content and channel. And so we've got a we've got a couple of minutes here. If anyone has any uh, has any questions, go ahead and do that. But again, for those of you who are on the on the webcast right now, grab that grab that process. It's a quick process. It's up in the handout section, upper right hand corner. Download that, and uh, we we've got some time for questions. One of the um, questions here, Bob, is around interviewing. Do you? Do you and your team ever help people place internal resources? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We do as much as that as we possibly can because, again, it gets back to that stickiness. So if and especially if, if a company is looking at it and they're going, we're a pure MSP, but we need somebody in-house for whatever reason. We don't question that. You know, we'll basically say, that's great. Here's what we can do, yada, yada, yada. But if we can be a part of the interview process, that means that they're not going to hire somebody who's going to come in with the idea of replacing us. Mm-hmm. They're going to come in with someone who is grateful because we were obviously a person in power or a party in power that had the the, the uh, ability to say yay or nay. So yeah. absolutely, 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 if you can. And, and if you've got any kind of job descriptions, if you've got any kind of tests, if you've got anything, share that information widely. Yeah, and then just dive in and, and create your own champion, essentially. Absolutely. Well. And then uh, a second question here, and uh, this will probably take us to the end. We've got about a, a minute 40 left, and this does end hard. But we, we have a, a comet situation where the person, the, the resource insists on being the contact for help desk tickets. So it sounds like the, uh, the and, and correct me if I'm wrong with, with, a, with a reply, but the resource in-house wants all the issues to go to them before it comes to the MSP, but the MSP does hold that desktop support relationship and it's creating some bottlenecks. Sounds like the, the resource is dumping 20 tickets at once onto the, onto the service team. How mm -hmm. would you handle that situation? And Bob, we got a minute so you can take it on home with that and any final thoughts. Cool. Uh, so th the first thing is you need to find out why. My suspicion is you probably have a bit of an ego thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if this person is, is an IT person, uh, make sure that they know that they have access to all of the tickets so they can always take a look at a ticket after you've, you've received it or used it uh, or, or have worked on it so they can basically say, yeah, that's good, that's bad. The other thing is, are they being charged for that piecemeal work? If they are, then you want to eliminate that. So you got to remember, it's people like Witham and NIMBY. What's in it for me and not in my backyard? You've got to find out what is his NIMBY and Witham. And then, and then directly deal with that. 
Um, that would be the one thing. The other thing is if you've got any metrics that show the difference between when he heard about it and when you heard about it, and just to show, hey, look, we're creating on average three day delay in us working on the ticket. And, and, you know, we're not quite sure exactly why that is.